Uh, because there's no magic drawing board today, uh, I brought a little, small little magic drawing board. <laughs> Do not think that I drew this. I found it online. Why do I have a donkey in my hand? I'll tell you why. The donkey, the colt, the foal of an ass, is the key to Palm Sunday. It is the total key to Jesus' life. And the total key to Holy Week. Today, Wednesday when he cleanses the temple, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, in that upper room that Jesus planned as well. Friday on the hill at the cross, Saturday when he goes down to hell to do the heroine of hell. All of it, you can just keep thinking all week of this donkey. Okay, now I'm going to put it down because I have to read my notes. All right. In 1999, a number of us were in the old city of Jerusalem and we walked the same path, we think, that those people in that procession walked. On the east side of Jerusalem, now on the west side, something else happened, I'll get to that. But on the east side of Jerusalem, coming off the Mount of Olives, and that's where we all started, uh, a procession began that Jesus planned very carefully, in case you missed it. Let me read again. Jesus was very, very much a good planner. When Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, Pastor Kim read this outside, he sent two of his disciples ahead and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt, the foal of a donkey, that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anybody asks you, what are you doing? Just say, the master needs it and it will be returned to you. He planned it very carefully because on the west side of the old city of Jerusalem at the uh, fortress, Antonio Fortress, was another procession. That procession happened three times a year at the great feasts of the Jewish festivals. And you know who came in there? Pilate. Two men, about the same age, 30 years old, led two completely different processions and Jesus made sure that it was very much a contrast. Because why? Well, Jesus comes in on the donkey. What does Pilate come in on? The white stallion. The picture of imperial power. Rome's program for peace, which included violence, of course. Jesus wanted everyone to know what a contradistinction his procession was and Pilate's procession. Now, hang with me here. This, by the way, we, we also went to, the, to that other side and we walked in like Pilate and we spent hours discussing the theology of what was happening, the reality of Jesus' life and ministry. Okay, on the east side, you got peasants. Everyday people filled with joy, as you were, I saw it in your eyes, with the palm branches, you know, powerless people compared to Rome. And they were filled with hope because of this Jesus that they had either heard their family member tell them about when they were in some crowd and Jesus was teaching, or they may have heard him themselves. And this was their day to finally recognize we aren't nobodies. Jesus went and collected all the unwanted, all his ministry. And that's kind of how we feel under the thumb of the bloody violence of Rome. It was a day of great hope. Okay. Uh, uh, John Dominic Crossan tells me this. On the east side, they figure, scholars figure, there are probably 600 peasants. That's a guess, an educated guess. But we know for sure there were 600 foot soldiers on this side coming with Pilate on his big white stallion. On this side, these beautiful little palm branches, they're, they're wavy, they can't hurt a flea, they're green, the color of new life. But what are these guys holding? Spears, 
shields. You hear the metal clanking of what's going on over there. You see the contrast? It gets better. On this side, the east side, you have Jesus representing the kingdom of God. On this side, you have Pilate, you know, Tiberius' puppet governor, who really is standing in for Tiberius, the emperor. On this side, you have Pilate entering with all the accoutrements of violence, the very opposite, and he represents the kingdom of the emperor, Caesar, who happened to be at that time Tiberius. On this side, you have Jesus, the son of who? God. On this side, you have Pilate, careful, who's standing in for Tiberius, the Caesar, who was called the son of God. Before Jesus was called that, they already called him the son of God. That was a phrase you used when you had someone powerful, see, back in those days, who could bring about peace, the Pax Romana, complete with blood, of course, and complete with getting rid of the nobodies, all the unwanted. That's the kingdoms of this world that we sing about at Christmas in Handel's Messiah, see? The kingdoms of violent power. And here you have this King, the Son of God, walk, riding in on the beast of burden, the lowly ass. And here you have Pilate representing Tiberius and every emperor of Rome, because they were all called Son of God, representing the real kingdom, <laughs> right? Yeah. This side, Jesus, he's got a program for salvation, wholeness, goodness. It's called peace through Love. This guy also has a program. Peace through degradation, degrading people, getting rid of people, violence. Uh, Jesus wanted to make sure everybody saw the contrast. Same with the cleansing of the temple. That was no last minute, you know, anger jag that Jesus had. He planned it very carefully. Well, we're told in the text today, he went quickly to see what was in the temple. And then he took his disciples back to the, wherever they were that, uh, at that evening. He planned it. He planned Thursday when you're coming back for Monday, Thursday, I hope, 7 o'clock. He planned that. He, he found an upper room. Everything he did was planned, just like his parables were very carefully planned. All right. Jesus will die at the end of the week on a cross. That's his throne. Pilate will go back to his throne, plush, very heavy, very soft at the same time, you know, for the, the emperor's man, Pilate. Jesus would be killed by the system, the system of Rome, the Pax Romana, because he's a troublemaker. He was. You are too as a Christian, by the way. <laughs> we'll get to that, and then we talk about sin boldly a little after this. Uh, Jesus, the troublemaker. You, the troublemaker, in Christ's shoes as well. You and I have, a, have a, a question to answer this morning. That's what this huge contrast is about. Which kingdom do you live in? Which kingdom do you want to live in? The Son of God who brings salvation through peace or the Son of God over here, in quotes, who brings salvation and wholeness through death, destruction, blood, that's the question. That's the contrast that Jesus is setting up for us. Who will we serve? You walk in Jesus' care. You don't belong to Caesar, to any Caesar, to any president, to any governor, to anybody, except Christ, who has already claimed you, by the way. You don't have to go around looking for it. It's done. It's a package deal. You belong to this kingdom over here, and you are cared for by the Son of God, no matter who you are or what status or what your problems might have been. This is the Son of God you belong to. And you live in this by faith, which is a gift. You didn't create it. The Holy Spirit did. It's in you. I love what Martin Luther says about faith. I'll close with this. Faith, this is 1522. Faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace 
so sure and certain that you could stake your life on it a thousand times. This kind of trust in God's grace makes a person joyful, confident, like you were walking in with the palms, and happy with regard to God and all creatures. This is what the Holy Spirit does by faith. Through the gift of faith, a person will do good to everyone without coercion. Because you belong to this side, see? You do good to everyone without coercion, willingly, happily, serving everyone, suffering everything for the love and praise of God who has shown such grace. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. Live joyfully into this kingdom, the kingdom of our Lord. Amen.